Man, thank you so much. Today is on Wednesday. Welcome so much. We are with Sister Betty here live on Word Toast Wednesday. Today is a day where we get to share the word of God from 6 p.m. up to 7 p.m. So welcome so much with the love of God. I'm glad to have you here. And uh, in the next few minutes, you want to proceed with our service. I bless the Lord for this opportunity that he has given us today. It's yet a new day that we can worship the Lord, we can honor the Lord, but most importantly, we can get to hear what the Holy Spirit wants to teach us today, this afternoon, and I know that we are all going to be blessed in Jesus' name. So you just uh, log in and welcome to today's service and keep on sharing, and the Lord is going to bless you all. So let's listen to one worship song as we wait for the rest to come in. Amen. <laughs> My heart be changed, renewed, flowing from a grace that I found in you. Lord, I've come to know weakness as I. By the power of your love, oh, Amen, 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 amen. 
Hallelujah to that. Praise God. Welcome, Sister Caroline. And uh, I thank the Lord because of this day that has been ordained with him from above. He's the one who's planned for us to meet, for me to be here, for you to be here. So I want to welcome you so much. Please, what just Wednesday we have uh, time to listen to the word of God, not only to listen to it, but to meditate on it later on, to eat of the word of God, so that whatever it is that the Lord wants to do to your spirit today, that you may receive it in Jesus' name. So I want us to begin with a word of prayer so that you can uh, continue with our session. And uh, we only have one hour, and that one hour is very precious to us. We want to listen to what the Lord wants to tell us. So let us begin with a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you. I praise your name. I worship you for who you are. I thank you for this opportunity that you've given us. I thank you because your word is spirit. It is life. It cleanses us. It washes us. It renews our minds. Oh, my God. Um, it, it gives us the empowerment that we need in these last days, oh, God. It increases our faith, oh, God. Um, it opens our eyes. Uh, for those who are blind, it also opens our ears, my God, in the realms of the spirit. It is one of the ways that you get to talk to your children, oh my God. I thank you because your word is very powerful, my God. It is from you. It is The word is you, Lord Jesus Christ. So I thank you for this word that you left for us while we are still here so that we can use it as a guide, oh my God. As I continue to minister your word today, Holy Spirit, I thank you because you're in me and you have been working in me. And I, as I deliver your message, I know that King of all glory, this message is for me and it's for everybody who's going to listen to it right now and later on. I thank you for this day. I bless your name. May your name be lifted up, O oh Lord. May we continue to glorify for who you are, you for who you are. In Jesus' name, to believe and pray. Amen. So thank you so much for joining in, even for those who are going to come in later on. So I'm glad to see you. I'm honored to see you. It is by the grace of God. Welcome, George, for those who are here and watching. From wherever you are, like I said, uh, we have uh, many people watching us from outside, but personally, I'm streaming from Kenya. My name is Sister Betty, and uh, I'm a revivalist, and I'm doing the work of the Lord because he has called me, and I know we have all been called. So it just depends what is your position and what are you doing in this kingdom. So... I want to thank all of us who have been with us for uh, during the seven days of uh, spiritual warfare that we've had. It ended today morning. And I really thank God because he gave us the power to be able to go into the realms of the spirit and to fight on behalf of our nation, on behalf of our families, on behalf of our personal lives, um, on behalf on, of the men and the women of God on behalf of the church and everything that we did, we did it to the glory and honor of God. And, I, and it is my prayer. Whatever it is that you are, don't forget who you are. Prayers, we're supposed to pray without ceasing. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, uh, as well as letting the word of God dwell in us richly from the book of um, Colossians. So I am glad you're here. And I want us to proceed to the word of God. And you just thank the Lord because the days that we're living in are days that are indeed, uh, we are being told of being watchful and being careful about what we are doing because very, very soon we are uh, waiting for our Lord Jesus Christ and that is why we are here. And that is the most important event in your life. It is the very most important event in your life. And if you live today, where are you going to, where are you headed to? But I'm glad because... The Lord is still working in his vineyard. He has not stopped working. Thank you, George. Welcome so much. And he's, continue, he's going to use his servants mightily at a time like this. The Lord has vessels that he's using. They're working on the ground. And because of what is coming, the Lord is fighting on behalf of his children, even for those who have not yet received this grace and they're still in darkness, so that they can be able to share in what we are going to receive from the Lord once we leave this place. So I love the Lord. I bless the Lord for this opportunity. And we are just going to con be continuing this Wednesday with the uh, uh, characteristics of prosperity preachers. We said for the next couple of Wednesdays, we shall continue with that. And I know that the Lord is faithful. And for those who are watching me, I urge you to keep on sharing. We know there are so many people who are lost and they're in the wrong altars. So I, I know that uh, the other time we talked about green. We want to continue with the word worldliness. And uh, 
I know that the Lord is going to help us. So the book of Second Peter chapter 2 uh, from verses 1 to 3 says this. We are continuing with the, the term worldly as a characteristic of uh, prosperity preachers who are here with us. He says, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall um, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who will privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves sweet destruction. Verse 2. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with faint words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Praise God. So we want to continue with the time, uh, term worldly as a character of uh, those who are into prosperity preaching. You know, the true gospel demands of us to know that apart from us having a God of grace, a God of love, and uh, the work of the cross that did uh, Jesus did on the cross, sorry, we also supposed to know that there's judgment on the other side. Yeah, there's this other part that uh, is there. So apart from love, there is this hard judgment that waits upon us apart from the grace of the Lord that has appeared to all men at a time like this to receive salvation. Nobody can force any man to receive salvation and to say that Jesus is Lord upon their lives. This is something that has to come from the inside. So even if uh, we are going to have all of these false prophets, every uh, false teachers are giving us this word that is contrary to what we are reading in the word of God that also says, there is a, a time for everything. There's a season for everything. And the times that we are preaching about now is the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and how the church can be, a, be well prepared or well equipped because of what is coming in Jesus' name. Yes, I know there are times that we need our faith to be increased. There are times that we need to be encouraged as a church. There are times that we need to hear the Holy Spirit at least uh, guiding us on the way to go but aside from that for those who are uh, living in an era like this the Lord demands of those who are teaching or preaching this gospel or prophesying they need to tell us the truth and they need to, uh, to give us a direction of where we are headed because in the spiritual realm the thing is that uh, Christ is coming very soon and he expects us to be watchful. He expects us to be very alert so that if there is any error, if there's any mistake that you're doing at this point, you need to know that I need to fix this at this time and know that we, we you are expected to walk in holiness and righteousness so that you can you can see God. So the book of Hebrews chapter 9, verses 27, as we proceed, says this. This is something that is very important. Hebrews chapter 9 verses 27 says this. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, there is a judgment. So, at most times, uh, the prosperity preacher will never preach something like this. Because remember, one of the characters that, that they have is the worldly character in Jesus' name. And when you have a worldly character, you are living in the flesh definitely. And you can get the works of the flesh from the book of Galatians chapter 5 from verses 19 to 21. Anything that involves the flesh, it is there. So we are on a journey, brethren. We are on a journey. Anybody that is watching this needs to know that we are on a journey. That a time comes when you are going to have to depart. And how are you going to depart? And where is it that you're going to go? So so for most of these uh, prosperity preachers, because that is the way we know them, they will not actually uh, dwell on this because they know the minute that they start making people aware of the truth, that they might not get as much uh, as they are getting in terms of money or whatever it is that they're getting 
from other members. So the book of Hebrews chapter 9 verses 27 says this, and it, as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this is the judgment. We've all lost people in our lives, people that we love. We've heard of people leaving this world, whether they were wealthy, whether they were not. And uh, when you leave this world, you have already left. And the word of God says that after you die once, there is judgment. And we need to know that is the time where you, you get to face your father, face to face, and you get to go to a place that you decided to go. But because we're in the final hour, we're in the last hour, and the enemy is looking for all sorts of ways that he can divert the church and that he can divert those people who are not in the spirit. I want to believe this word is for you and this word is for me. Now, we've had an ongoing series about prosperity preachers and what they're doing, but we need to note one thing that uh, since they're not preaching about holiness and repentance, definitely they have a worldly character because they are being led by the flesh, like I said. I want us to look at the book of Acts chapter 20, verses 28, as we proceed. Just open your Bible in the book of Acts chapter 20, verses 28. Welcome so much. For those who are coming in, it says this, that I will read from King James Version. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and unto all the flock over we over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he had purchased with his own blood. Praise God. You know, we were all purchased at a price. And once sin came to this world, we were all separated from our Heavenly Father. And the only way we will actually get back to our Heavenly Father because of this great separation, there had to be an, the ultimate sacrifice. And that ultimate sacrifice we received from our Lord Jesus Christ. And I really thank the Lord for the work of the cross that he did. Because why it not him doing that and why it not him going to the cross? I am telling you, no man, no woman, no child, no every other living being will be here right now. We will all be suffering and our fate will be sealed. But because of the Lord's grace and because he loved us so much and after this separation, the Lord said that I don't want to see man suffering. I don't want man to go to the eternal fire. Let me see what I can do. So, there was this one person who decided in his heart and said, I want to go back to earth and become the ultimate sacrifice and provide this grace so that whomever is going to re receive me as Jesus and Lord upon his life, that he can have the chance to come into my kingdom, of course. And I really thank the Lord for that. And that is what you are fighting over every single day, that you are not going to meet that opportunity to be able to share in our Father's glory. And I want to believe that you are also uh, in that position. So the Lord is saying in the book of Acts chapter 20, verses 28, we're talking about prosperity preachers, that for a true man of God or a true woman of God, yeah, that servant that the Lord has entrusted his church with, the Lord is saying, take it therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over, the, over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God. Amen. The men of God, the true men of God, like I said, are preparing the church of Christ right now as we speak. I am talking about those who are in the spirit, those who have been soaked in the blood, those who have been called, and those who have accepted the calling of God and have understood what it means to be given charge of the flock of God. It is not a very serious thing because even if one is going to get lost, the man of God knows that they are going to be asked. And that is why they are praying of our souls every single day. That is why they should be teaching us and feeding us with the word of God so that we are fully equipped and we are ready to know that Jesus expects everybody to be prepared. But on this other side, the prosperity preacher does not concentrate this. He doesn't take heed about anything because already he's in, in his mind. He's operating in, in the flesh and he wants to make sure that he can get as uh, as uh, he can get uh, satisfied with the things of this world. 
He's out to make sure that he can enrich himself. He's out to make sure that he can make a name for himself. He's out to make sure that he benefits, but every other person that is under him does not benefit because their eyes have been closed. Their eyes have been blinded. They don't understand what is going on. But in the realms of the spirit, they're going nowhere. But here the Lord is telling us that the true uh, men of God, the true preachers, the true evangelists, the prophets, everybody else that is serving in the fivefold ministries, including us ourselves, that we need to take heed. Take heed unto yourselves. Everybody that has been given the charge of a flock over which the Holy Ghost had made you overseers. To mean this is actually a great responsibility that the true men and women of God have been given and they should take it with the seriousness that they have been given. Because at the end of the day, the Lord expects the church to bear fruit, but above everything, they expect them to give us the truth and to feed us with the word of God and that word should take us to our Father if we abide by the word and if you walk in obedience in Jesus' name. And I'm really praying to the Lord that this message is going to go very far. So, and the Lord writes down there, which to feed the church of God, which he had purchased with his own blood. I am telling you, welcome so much, Patrick. Uh, the price that was paid for the church, it was a very expensive one. And it was done once. And the Lord did it once. He went through shame. He had all those stripes while bearing that cross. And he did it so that you and I can get that opportunity, can get that power, number one, to inherit the kingdom of God, apart from all every other benefit that is in at the cross. So when this other, uh, when these other people come in, these prosperity preachers masquerading as men and women of God, they fail to see the work of the cross and they fail to understand that the Lord is always watching and seeing everything that is going on everywhere at all time. The only thing is the Lord has released his grace and he has given them enough time to repent. But I can assure you, because of the work that he did, he doesn't want to see any of us perishing. And that is why we need to really pray for those who are under false teachings. Amen. So all of the, um, all of the men of God who have been entrusted with the flock or overseers must adhere to this above scripture very, very cleanly and teach the truth. The word of God says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, I want us to look at 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Second Timothy chapter three. Second Timothy um, chapter three, verses sixteen to seventeen says this: All Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction. In righteousness. Verse 17 says this that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Meaning that uh, if you are able to discern the character and dif differentiate between one that is preaching the true gospel and this other person that is preaching their own things, you are able to see from this word from the book of Second Timothy chapter 3, verse verses 16 to 17, telling us that. Every strict, uh, scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, meaning there must be reproof, there must be correction, there must be instruction in righteousness. So we all must ex accept correction when it comes to the word of God. We all must accept reproof when it comes to righteousness so that there is a balance in our spiritual lives. And what people fail to see is that when you are under somebody who's preaching about prosperity, amen, you're going through a tough time, you, you are trying to uh, see and uh, ask yourself, why am I going through this? 
Why am I struggling with poverty? Why am I struggling with all of these diseases? Why am I not having answers to whatever it is that I'm going through and I'm not receiving them anywhere? I'm telling you, when it comes to scripture and you read the word of God, you are going to be able to see some most of the answers to your questions. But because for one reason or the other, the false preachers know that uh, these people don't know the word of God. They're not reading the word of God. So most likely if I tell them that you are, you are in poverty because of one, two, three, if you remove a seed or you do this, the Lord is going to increase you. Of course, as a human being, you're going to do it because you want your troubles to end. Amen. You want your diseases to end. You want your struggles to end. You want to gain favor in your family. You want the spirit of death to end in your family. You want to live a good life. You want uh, everything that bad that has been happening to stop happening. But the question is, if you've not understood the word of God, where are you going to be? Of course, you're going to be misdirected. And before you find out that you've been doing the wrong thing, you've sat under this uh, person for the longest time and so much damage has been done. So by the time you're realizing the truth, you have to actually look for the right altar. You need to be prayed for. You need to seek the Lord's deliverance because of everything that you received has to come out so that you can start afresh with Jesus Christ because the time that you are there, you are separated with God because there's no way you can sit under a false prophet and go to heaven. There's no way you can sit under a false teacher and go to heaven because whatever it is that they're doing, they're not delivering the truth. And what you are receiving is not 100% from the Lord. And that is why we are, we are being told that in the last days, we have to be very, very careful about what we are watching, about who we are listening to or paying attention to, about what we are receiving in terms of doctrine, in terms of what, in terms of prayers, where we are going. We have to be very careful because we want the Lord to find us prepared when he comes for his church, which means preparation is a personal thing. Like I said, even if your pastor is going to preach to you, he's going to pray to you, preparation takes personal sacrifice. That is why God says you need to pray every single day, even for some of us who are, who are, who are believers and are believed in the work of the cross. We also need to pray for ourselves because there is so much going on and the agendas of the enemy are everywhere to make sure that even the elect don't make it. Amen. So we need to be very careful because of what is there. We need to be very careful because of what we are expecting. And we need to be very careful because the Lord is coming for us very soon. So as we proceed, the thing is this. Even if you're waiting of the blessings of the Lord, the Lord is going to do it. And when we live a righteous life, we need to know that automatically, the blessings of the Lord will follow us. That is in the book of Isaiah chapter 1 verses 19. In Jesus' name, you can just open your Bible. Isaiah chapter 1 verses 19. It says this. Isaiah chapter 1 verses 19 says this. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. So actually, one of the ways you can receive the blessings of the Lord is if you're willing and obedient. If you want the Lord to open the door of your blessings, is that if you're willing and you're obedient and you're walking in righteousness, automatically the Lord doesn't have a problem with blessing you. Amen. If you have sacrificed and you're doing the right thing before the Lord, when your time comes, the Lord is, is automatically going to bless you because he loves you and he wants to see you progressing in your life. But the thing, but the thing is this, our blessings can be hindered with three things. Number one, personal mistake. If you make a personal mistake, of course, your blessings are going to be hindered. Maybe the Lord wanted to bless you. At one, at one way or another. And the time of your blessing had come. 
but you made a personal mistake through sin, then your blessings are going to be withheld because remember, you are out of the covenant. You are not in the covenant. And when you're in the covenant, you're talking about somebody who has received the Lord as personal savior and are walking in obedience. But you see, when you're under a prosperity preacher, they're not going to tell you that. They're only going to tell you, you remove a seed, do one, two, three, and you're going to receive the blessings. What if they don't come? You will have already spent all of your money and you're now going to be in abject poverty. But the word of the Lord says, if you're willing and obedient, surely the Lord must remember you. And you have seen the Lord remembering those people who stuck with Jesus Christ. And they decided, I'm not going to go to a witch doctor. I'm not going to seek uh, false prophecies. I'm not going to take a shortcut. Because I know that the Lord must come through for me. Because I've decided to stand firm. But this is not the kind of teaching that you're going to hear from prosperity preachers. For them is you remove as much as you have. And the Lord is going to do it. And that is not the way it works in the kingdom of God. Number two, another thing that is going to make you maybe not receive the blessings of the Lord at that time is that, uh, for example, if the Lord has decided that maybe you need to wait for some time before you receive it, he has not said no, but uh, the Lord has actually said you need to wait for it. So you must wait for it so that it can come. Amen. Because sometimes we do receive, uh, the Lord needs to ask to wait for that blessing. And the Lord is intervening and saying, you need to wait for this blessing. It's not right now. But it's not said that you cannot have it. In Jesus' name. You've not made a mistake. But the Lord is telling you to wait. Yes. And number three, of course, the enemy can also delay. So you have a mistake that can delay your blessing. Number two, we have a godly delay. Amen. And number three, we have demonic delay. But the end of the day, I want us to know and to understand that. Everything that you are hearing right now is very timely. Don't be in a rush to make wealth. Don't be in a rush. Welcome, Pastor Joseph. Don't be in a rush to live a life of luxury. Don't be in a rush to do things the way that other people are doing. You know, there are people, because you're talking about worldliness, and you know anybody who is a friend of the world, of course, is an enemy of God. Because worldliness and God cannot meet anywhere. Worldliness are people of the flesh. But people of the spirit wait upon the Lord. In Jesus name. You know some of these preachers. We don't know where they get their powers from. We don't know how they are getting this wealth. But we know it is not godly. We all know that all those who wait upon the Lord cannot be put to shame. And when we are talking about worldliness, it's a very extraordinary lifestyle. It is a very extraordinary lifestyle that if you compare with the one, you realize that this person is really out to make money. He doesn't care about the hearts of the children of God. He doesn't care about what this other person is going through or what this other person has to do for them to remove the money that they want to remove. Maybe they are sacrificed everything knowing that the Lord is coming through for them. But it's a falsehood in Jesus' name. You know, you can sit down and admire the life of, of a person. You can admire all the cars that they have. You can admire the big houses that they have. You can admire the power that they have. But you don't understand what it is that they are doing. To receive everything that, I, that they are getting. There are some of them who are serving in the kingdom of darkness. Giving out all sorts of sacrifices. And they are ready to kill all of their family members to receive that. But for us who the Lord is telling us. That if we are willing and obedient. We don't have to walk in the worldliness. And desire the things of the world. Because the Lord is already ready to give us what we desire of him. As long as we pray and seek the face of the Lord, surely he shall remember us because he loves us and because we are his children. Amen. That when we realize, when we live a righteous life, surely you must be, if you're willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. And I'm telling you, this has worked. Even for most of the people who are in ministry right now, 
maybe they began uh, in a small place. I can imagine like that. For those who are walking in the Lord in spirit, they had few members. Amen. But they kept on praying. They did not lose their focus on Jesus Christ. Of course, they knew that one day God would lift them from wherever they are. But it took time. It took a lot of prayers. It took a lot of sacrifices for them to get where they are getting. But these other false preachers, they want to get everything very quickly. They don't want to pay the price. They don't want to look at the work of the cross because they're looking at falsehood. But every other person that is living a holy life and has been willing and obedient and right now is enjoying the blessings of the Lord, I'm telling you they have a story to tell of you. Welcome, Mrs. Mrs. Pastor Tarimu. Amen. Everybody that is enjoying of the Lord, and I'm sure you've seen the servants of the Lord who are right now enjoying the blessings of the Lord and they're saying that they are blessed. They will always tell you the days they walked without shoes. The days they went without food. The days they went without embarrassment. Nobody wanted to be associated with them. Because everybody thought they were no, they were a nobody. In fact, maybe the Lord spoke to them and I and told them, twenty years from now, or fifteen years from now, you are going to be very far. You are going to be on the biggest TVs. People are going to listen to you on radio. When everybody listens to what you are speaking about, they are going to know you are an honorable servant of God. But it's called paying the price. It's called praying the paying the price legitimate blessings that have come from the father but they came through pain they came through hardship and the lord probably tested them to make sure that they don't uh they don't get all of this wealth and have pride they don't get all this wealth and have ignorance they don't get all of this wealth and then in their minds they leave god in jesus name so we are still talking about worldliness and I'm telling you, worldliness is something that the Lord really hates so much. It is something that the Lord really hates so much. And that is why the Lord was forewarning us ahead of time that there are going to be people like that who are going to come into our lives and who are going to try to divert us from the true gospel, from the true doctrine that involves righteousness and holiness. Because without holiness, no man, no man shall see the Lord. And that is why we are working very, 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 very hard as believers because we know that the hour is at hand. The things that we used to pray for that you're not praying for now, but praying for your soul at this minute is something that is very important. It is something that is very important. As we've read from the book of Second Peter. But there are false prophets also among the people. Even as there shall be false teachers among them. That the Lord is already telling us and warning us. That these people are there. And they are being followed by very, very, very many people. They are being followed by very many people. But it's because these people are blinded. They have not understood what the truth is. And it is only the Lord that can deliver them. Who privilege shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction? Meaning, there is destruction. Destruction is ahead for everybody that is planning falsehood because scriptures cannot be broken. Whatever the Lord wrote in his word, my brothers and my sisters, Whatever the Lord wrote in his, in his word is a prophecy and it must come to pass because our God is not a man that he should lie. So as you read down that, it says that uh, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Swift destruction can come in, is going to come in whereby the Lord is seeing that my people are being misled. The Lord is saying, is seeing my children, my people are still heartbroken. The Lord is seeing that uh, people are still in darkness. 
The Lord is watching from above and seeing that things are not right. And either way, this gospel must go everywhere. But there is a big hindrance. And the big hindrance come in whereby we are having false teachers and false prophets. And of course, it was written so that we could know that these people are going to be here with us. They are going to live with us. They are going to stay with us. You are going to see them preaching. You are going to see them doing all sorts of wonders and miracles that are not godly. But at the end of the day, there is something we call swift destruction. When the Lord destroys you, what does it mean? It means you're not going to be seen anywhere on the face of this earth. And everybody, at the word of God says that the wages of sin is death. And when he says destruction, it means it is only a matter of time before he does what he wants to do. And I know he's going to do it. So from wherever you are, we need to know and acknowledge that worldliness is something that is there. Worldliness is something that is it is there. So that when we, we when we desire to have all of these things, instead of making sure that is Jesus Christ really living in my heart? Welcome, Emily. Is Christ really living in my heart? Because that is the most important thing. Is Jesus Christ Lord in my heart? Where is Jesus? Is, is Jesus Christ reigning in my heart through the power of the Holy Spirit? Am I in the Spirit? Do I have Jesus in me? Is he living in me? Is he working in me? What am I carrying? Am I in the Spirit or am I in the flesh? At a time like this where we are being warned, we need to be very careful. Who is reigning in your heart? Who is reigning in your spirit? Who is controlling your mind? Who is controlling your actions? When people are looking at you, do they see God? Can somebody really stand? Can the Lord really stand and say, I've not, have I seen, I've, I've not seen somebody like you in Jesus' name? Can the Lord really testify and say, that it is the king of kings living inside you and you are not going to abandon the faith. That you are going to stand firm with the Lord in his word and do the right thing until Christ comes. Because it is some of these things that are of the world that have driven many people to false teachings and to false doctrine. Because you are asking yourself, why is somebody like this operating in such a way? And you don't want to ask yourself, what sort of power is behind this man? What sort of power is behind this woman? We are not, you're not really asking the Holy Spirit and discerning and knowing that this person and God left each other a very long time ago. And I think that is a problem that we have today. If you have Jesus in your life and you're walking in obedience, I am telling you, even if these things of the world are going to come and somebody else is going to come with a false doctrine, you are going to know, let me stick with the Jesus that I have. I know he's going to bless me. I know he's going to remember. But the most important thing, let him reign in my spirit that when he comes, he's going to take me to be where he is in Jesus' name. I am telling you, we must discern the times and the seasons. It is very easy to admire. It is very easy to admire somebody else's life without understanding what they are doing. It is very easy to want to drive that car without understanding what is the spirit behind that car. It is very easy to admire somebody else's business, multi-million business, without understanding how many people they have sacrificed. It is very easy to be drawn into the world. And that is why the Lord has warned his children about worldliness and the desires of the flesh because he foreknew that this thing called, called the world, the flesh, and the enemy. Those three things are what have taken most believers down, never to be seen again. The world, the flesh, and the enemy. Those three things. So that even if a false prophet is going to come, are you going to be able to discern that this is a false prophet? Or are you going to run quickly and live 
your, the true church, the place where Christ left you, and run to the other side without realizing that you've made a mistake. Can you really still see in the spirit? Can you still hear in the spirit? Do you know what you're doing at this time? Are you on the right side of God or are you on the wrong side? Who is guiding you? In Jesus' name. And verses 2 says, 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 to 3 says, And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of the truth shall be evilly spoken of. How many times have we preached the truth doctrine? But somebody else prefers, uh, the world prefers to listen to something else. I am telling you it was written that many are going to follow their pernicious ways. If the Lord himself is saying, Jesus Christ, that they're being going to be followed by many, what does that tell you? But the gospel is not for everybody. It is only for the poor, the chosen few who are willing to sacrifice and to go with the truth. That those who are practicing falsehood are going to be followed by many. And if you see in the realms of the spirit, actually uh, many people are following in their millions falsehoods because it was written in the word already and the Lord knew a time is going to come when people are going to be following uh, false doctrine and false teachings. So it's, it is not from nowhere. It is in the word of God. Verses 3. And through covetousness shall they with vain words make merchandise of you they're going to make their businesses of you they're going to milk you of everything that you have and they're going to leave you dry by the time you come back i am telling you in the spirit you're finished when somebody looks at you you are finished because you're not the same person that knew god so my prayer to us today is that we really need to understand that the hour is at hand and these men and these women, they are amongst us. And very many people have been drifted away by those people who are masquerading to say, and they're saying that they love, uh, that, that uh, uh, they're there serving the Lord and they're not. And I'm praying that the Lord is going to open our eyes so that those who are in, are in those wrong altars, the Lord can remove them from that place. And I want to trust the Lord that this coming year, the Lord is going to do it. That is going to free his sister, the, 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 our brothers and sisters, because they are brothers and sisters. There are those who don't belong there. The Lord wants to remove them because He wants to save them. And when He sees them, they belong to the kingdom. And He's going to do it if you continue to pray. But I really thank the Lord because of where we are going. I really thank the Lord because amongst the ravenous wolves that are around us, there are those men and women, true men and women, who are serving Jesus Christ in truth and in spirit and who are sharing the right doctrine, the true gospel that the Lord wants them to share so that they can take us to where our Father is because they have understood their responsibility and they have understood the seriousness that is, that is there when it comes to the flock. That the Lord has entrusted them with. And if you are watching this. And the Lord has entrusted you with the flock. I am telling you. You need to be very prepared. Because even if you lose even one. Even one. The Lord is going to judge. And our Lord is very is a very harsh judge. We will rather seek his face now. And his grace while he's still available. We would rather amend our ways now. And know that. The sun is, tru is truly coming for those who are ready. For those no, not for those who are not prepared. For those who are ready to sacrifice. For those who are willing to leave everything else because of the cross. For those who know that I have purpose, I want to make it. It doesn't matter what the enemy is going to do. But I have purpose in my heart to walk in the truth so that I can be where he is. And I'm telling you, it is very possible. It is very, very possible for us to make it. But I am telling you, it takes a lot of hard work. We have to deny ourselves. We have to pay the price. And we have to know that many are called, but few are chosen. Question is, 
Are you among the, the many who have been called but have not been chosen? And, and are you working uh, and are you working to make sure that you are amongst the chosen few? Are you working to make sure you are amongst the chosen few? Welcome, Pastor Kingori. I am telling you, this is the time whereby many people's eyes have been blinded. But I really thank the Lord because even if their eyes are blinded, the Lord is doing something. And there is going to be a wave. A wave is coming. And I'm telling you that wave is coming. And it's coming very soon. The gospel is being preached. It is going to be preached everywhere. The Lord is going to revive us in our hearts, in our spirits, in our minds for those who are ready. And because of what is coming, he's going to save those that are his. And I want to believe you belong to Jesus Christ. I want to believe that you are ready for what is about to happen. Because even if you are going to the next year and you are believing in the power of God, we are believing in the blessings of the Lord. The most important thing is, even if you are going into the next year, what are you carrying? Are you ready? Are you right with God? Do you still hear the voice of God? Where are you in all this? Can the Lord really trust you at a time like this? Can the Lord really use you at a time like this? Can the Lord really say that my church is really working very hard in my vineyard and very soon I'm going to reward them for the work that is done? So we, we have been proceeding with uh, the doctrine. Uh, we have been proceeding with uh, the word and characteristics of prosperity preachers. We looked at greed, but we were still pro progressing with worldliness. May the Lord really help us not to desire. Because the problem starts when you start desiring the things of the world. You will find yourself doing things and you will find yourself following false doctrines. Things that are not of the Lord. You know, if you are contented with what you have, the Lord will surely come and bless you. Because when you are contented, it means, I know Lord, I know God, you've given me this. But a time is coming. When you're going to increase me. Because it, you are the Lord of increase. You say that our, the works of our hands are blessed. And you say that when we walk in obedience, we shall eat the good of the land. That is our Lord Jesus Christ. Because he's a merciful God. And he's a good God. He surely loves us. And he's surely going to take care of us. But make sure that the enemy does not divert you into loving the things of the world. The way the other people are behaving. That is not the way we are supposed to behave. You remember you are called and the Lord says that he paid a huge price on the cross. Because of you and because of me. Welcome Beatrice. He paid a huge price. So nobody should divert us. Don't allow the enemy to divert you. Don't allow the enemy at this time to divert you. Because the spirit of diversion is in the air. You stay focused. Be ready in and out of season. Serve the Lord fervently. Make sure you're hot in the spirit. Read the word of God. Pray without ceasing. Understand the times and seasons. And you will see the goodness of the Lord. Whatever it is the Lord has planned for you, it shall surely come your way. Yes, there are trials and tribulations. Yes, the Lord says that the, that the just shall live by faith. And yes, I know wickedness has, has increased. But even if wickedness has increased, for those who have been following uh, the sermons that the Holy Spirit has helped me with, it means you need to go a notch higher in the spirit. So even if he increases, you're also increasing. And you're increasing more than 100%. So that even if he's going to rise, you are going to be higher than he is. I know that the Lord is uh, preparing us. He's continuing to prepare us for what is, he has planned. But above all, I want to thank us so much. We are on the long journey of salvation. And the enemy is there to fight your faith. The flesh is there. The world is there. So we have to be very, very careful. But the most important thing, we have the Holy Spirit. 
and the works of the Holy Spirit is in, in John chapter 16, you also have in John chapter 14. And when you have the Holy Spirit of God in you, I am telling you that He shall surely guide us, He shall surely help us. John chapter 14, verses 26. But that when Jesus Christ went back, He told us that I am not leaving you as an orphan, but I'm leaving you with the Holy Spirit. John 14, 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you. How powerful is that? And when you read in uh, chapter John chapter 14, verses uh, 16, he says, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another Comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Make sure that the Holy Spirit is going to abide in you forever. He's supposed to stay with you forever until Christ comes for this church. Make sure you read that verse. John 14 verses uh, 16. And I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Let the Holy Spirit stay in you. Let him be in you. Let him remind you of things that are to come. So that even if the world comes, it will pass away. But the world of the Lord will remain. That if the last of the flesh come, they will surely pass away. But the word of the Lord will remain. Otherwise, I want to thank you all so much. It's been a powerful week. The seven days we had of spiritual warfare. I really thank the Lord. And today we have been proceeding with the word of God about the end times and about uh, some of the characteristics of prosperity preachers. And part of that is worldliness. But I want to thank the Lord because the Holy Spirit is going to give us victory. You are not alone. And you are never alone. As long as the Holy Spirit is working in you. Welcome Evelyn. As long as the Holy Spirit is working in you. And is supposed to be in you forever. Let him remind you of the things to come. Let him remind you. That you, he says that you need not worry. You need not worry. Have peace in your heart. Because where our father has gone. He has gone to prepare a place for us. He's not for everybody. It's only for the few people. So this season that you're going through is a very short period. But whatever it is that you're going to receive is going to be an ever, is going to be everlasting. And you're going to enjoy it for the rest of your life. So let everybody else laugh at you. Welcome, Doreen. Let people laugh at you. Let them see like you are crazy. You, you are not thinking. You don't know where you're going. But let the Lord give a good report of you. In the spirit, you're okay. But in the physical, people think you are not okay. But as long as you know who you are and where you are headed, I am telling you, we must see the goodness of the Lord. The Lord must deliver us. He must take care of us. John chapter 14 verses 1 says this. I want to read this to encourage somebody today. From verses 1 up to 4. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. So you are, you are, we are believing in God. You are believing in Jesus Christ. And because you are believing in God and you are believing in Christ, you are not looking at the world. Because everything of the world is coming. Let them build their big towers. Even up. Up to 100 floor. Because they are of the world. Verses 2. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. Look at this. Even if uh, there are the houses that are here, we admire every, the, all those big houses because of the world. You're looking at somebody's house and you're saying, my God, if you give me a house like that, I will pray like forever. But there's a better house for you called a mansion. And do you know, heavenly mansions, they are so extraordinary. They're not like houses like here. Houses like uh, the ones that we have here on earth, they have rust, they have moth. Some of them have rats. Some have cockroaches. Oh my God. Some of them even have bed bugs. Yeah, I know you know what I'm talking about. But the mansion that the Lord is preparing for you, the place that is preparing for fellow servants like us, I am telling you, if the Lord was to open your eyes in the spirit, we will not joke around with the things of the world. Because they are here and you are leaving them here. And that is why 
most of when somebody dies, especially those people who are wealthy and they're not made up their minds, we always hearing them say that and the way they focus so much on their wealth and they realize that wealth was nothing. In short, the things of the world are useless. I don't know if you've ever listened to some of these documentaries. Somebody had a lot of money and maybe they died because of cancer or something like that. But when they're on their, bed, they, on their deathbed, so they actually realize what I was really working hard for. Imagine it means nothing. I'm not taking anything with me. I'm leaving all of this money here. I'm dying in this bed with nobody. My family members are here, but I have to leave. I don't want to leave, but where I'm going, I don't even know where I'm going. Because they thought that the things of the world were so important. But a time has come for them to live. A time has come for them, they're in pain. They're suffering. Their money cannot help them. Their friends cannot help them. Their family members cannot help them. But see what the Lord is telling us here. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I have gone to prepare a place for you. Oh God. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, that ye may also be. That the Lord is saying, after it's prepared a place for you, that you can be where he is. And that is why we are saying, let these things of the world not divert us. I'm telling you, the world is very seductive. If the Lord says that friendship with the world is an enemy with God, means it has some sort of impact. It has a very large impact. A very big one. So we have to actually pray a lot and ask the Lord to help us. So that we can be where Christ is. And reign with him in power and in majesty. Because hell was not created for us. It was not created for us from the beginning. It was not in the plan of God. It was not in the will of God that anyone should go there. But the plan and the will of God was for us to be where he was. And you have that opportunity and have that opportunity. So let us leave these worldly things. I am telling you, leave these worldly things. Let those, all those who want to preach about uh, these prosperity preachers, let them go on. But we are being told in the end, there is destruction. They are going to be destroyed. But for us who are working very hard in this kingdom and telling that I'm not going to compromise because I need a new dress. Jehovah, I'm not, go, I'm not going to compromise with any man because my house has been locked up. And somebody is saying he's going to give me a house that has five floors. Let it stay. But let me be in the right standing with God. And if I stand firm with Jesus Christ, surely he must remember his children. Do you know you're, you're so important? Do you know you're so important before God? He loves you and he values you so much that he has kept a place for you. If you are... If you're going to stand firm and win the, the war of the world, of the flesh, and that of the enemy, I'm telling you, you must see Christ. We must see Christ. But may the Lord really help us. Because sometimes we feel like we have a right to some of these things. Maybe you've prayed so much. Uh, you've waited on the Lord so much. But he's, he's coming. I'm telling you, he's coming. The Lord is coming. But don't rush to the things of the world that bring confusion. It may seem like a good thing, but it is a counterfeit. And when you fall for the counterfeit, I'm telling you, you're going nowhere. Wait for the blessings of the Lord. Don't follow false teachings. Don't follow false pastors and false prophets. We have already weighed them. In a true church, there must be holiness preaching. Apart from grace. Because these are the end times. We really need to discern the times. But I know you are here. And the Lord is going to help you. And if, and if anybody is going to watch this later on. I am telling you the Lord. All you have to do is to ask God. Is this the right place? If it is the wrong place. The Lord is going to lead you. Because we are in the final hour. We don't want to lose you to the kingdom of darkness. For nothing. We need you on this other side. The winning team. And we are winning. And we must win because you are more than conquerors and the kingdom of God, even though it suffereth violence, we must win. 
we must win at the end of the day because we are not bowing down to idols. We are not bowing down to men. We are focusing on the cross, the author and finisher of our faith, our Lord Jesus Christ. And if he's preparing a place for us, I am telling you this is a marathon. It is a long race. Make sure you run your race well and get to your destiny. If you can pray and read the word of God and focus on your destiny as you wait upon Jesus Christ and walk in obedience, you must eat off the good of the land that the Lord has prepared for you. So that was our word for today. And um, come tomorrow on Thursday. Tomorrow is on Thursday. We are going to meet. And on Thursday, we always meet from 8 p.m. up to 9 p.m. And I actually realized the children of God are sick. People are sick. People's hearts have been broken. People are broken. They are living a life of no hope. And they're waiting for you to pray for them because you have that power. And that is why most of the time you see most people are willing to join uh, healing services and delivering services because of the pain. They don't know where to go. But I'm praying that the Lord can use you in a mighty way. That you can be that vessel of honor the Lord can use. That you can speak a word so that the life of somebody is going to change. You are capable. I am capable. Let us move forward with the word of God. Let us walk in the will of God, not in the will of men. And let us serve God with fear and trembling and obey God and hear his voice. That is the most important thing. Hearing his voice so that you know whether you are together or you are not. If you are not, repent. Go back to Jesus so that he can show you your sin, so that you can repent and so you can stand firm. But if you are well in the Lord, you continue to walk in that direction Fight every other form of temptation and I know the Lord is going to see you through. So we are going to meet tomorrow on Thursday, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. I know the Lord has a word for you, but otherwise I love you so much, the love of God. We are soldiering on. Make sure you suit up Ephesians chapter 6. That is what is going to help us right now. If you don't have your whole suit on, you don't have your helmet, or if you get to an accident, especially one of a motorbike, you are going to die. Do you know why they put the helmets? Because in case of an accident, the heads can be protected. I hope you have your full armor on. Have your whole armor on. The times and the seasons dictate you need to have your whole armor on. And the Lord is going to bless you. Otherwise, I want to thank, thank the Lord. I want us to finish with the word of prayer. And know that the Lord is going to bless us. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you. Because you're worthy to be praised. I thank you for this hour that you've given us, O oh God. It was an hour of sharing your word, O oh God. And I thank you because of those who are going to watch this later on. I thank you, Jesus Christ, because of using me as your vessel. Tomorrow you're going to meet for the healing and deliverance service. And I know it is you who is going to do it. Heal your children. Deliver your children. Let them have hope. Let them have a future. Let them know that they are going somewhere, oh Lord. We bless you for who you are. In Jesus' name, do believe and pray. Amen. So I'm really thankful for God. And uh, I know that the Lord is going to help us. And you're not going to walk. As the worldly people walk, especially at a time like this, let the Lord bless you genuinely. Don't look at the things of the world. The Lord can bless you from, he can lift you from grass to grace, like he says in his word. I am honored you've been here with me. God bless you all so much. You can subscribe also to my YouTube channel. That is Revival Sister Betty. Uh, my Facebook page, you already know it. Uh, it is Revival Sister Betty. You can share this word. And we always meet here thrice a week, every Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. God bless you so much. Thank you so much, Esther Degwa, Pastor Josephat Mose. Thank you so much. We have Bernard. We have Nancy. We have uh, my sister Emily. We have Beatrice. We have Steve. We have George Mutai. We have Caroline Cynthia. I know that there are also so many other people watching. And uh, I've seen some other pastors are also watching. And this is our year. Oh, we are finishing this year well. I want to believe the Lord. And come 2022, let the Lord use you in a mighty way. But above all, make sure you're right with God. So shalom, shalom, shalom. Take care, guys. I'm going to see you uh, tomorrow from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. And that service is going to be healing. So whatever it is that you're going through, I know the Lord is going to do it. And part of the cross involved healing. So there was healing on the cross. So you can just come for that service. 
I know that the Lord is going to use me in a mighty way. I humble myself as his servant. And God bless you so much. I thank you for this powerful service. I'm going to upload it later on on my YouTube channel. You can look at it later on. And uh, I thank God for his grace. So uh, thank you so much. Thank you for the blessings of the Lord. Thank you because you've been here and because of what he's going to do. And make sure that you keep on sharing so that others also can receive the blessings of the Lord. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. So we have been blessed so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. God bless you all so much. I'm looking forward to see you uh, for the Kesha, for those who are going to be in Don Room. In Jesus' name, I'm looking forward to see you crossing over. Thank you so much, thank you so much. Thank you so much, thank you so much. Amen, amen, and amen, and amen, and amen. See you all tomorrow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Shalom, shalom, Esther. Shalom, 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 shalom. By the grace of God, we shall see each other tomorrow for the evening service and deliverance service. God bless you all so much. Shalom, 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 shalom. By the grace of God, we are going to meet there. I love you, people of God. More anointing, more grace, more power. Amen, and amen, amen. Thank you.